Hello, we'd like to welcome you to the Leon County Master Gardener Lunch and Learn. Today our program is on kitchen garden, edible gardening, and our presenter today is Leon County Master Gardener Kathy Choate. Hello to all my Master Gardener family and those that are tuning in live for this live presentation. And thank you Richard for setting all of this up. Today we're going to talk about the kitchen garden, edible gardening. Welcome to my kitchen garden. This is a pathway right outside my kitchen door. The kitchen garden was referred to as a potager in Great Britain. A potager garden is a vegetable plot that is ornamental and close to the kitchen or patio. Since it is close to the home, it should be pleasing to the eye. Potagers were also very popular in France. A survey was taken in 1994 and it revealed that 23% of the fruit and vegetables consumed by the French are homegrown and organic. A potager design is typically informal. The kitchen garden is part of your landscape. It should have color and texture. I know when I go to someone's home, the first thing I notice when I drive up is their landscape. Besides color and texture, it should also be aromatic. Okay, I want everybody to close your eyes. Everybody have their eyes closed? Imagine what color you would like to see first when looking at your kitchen garden. Next, imagine what you love to cook and how it smells. Nothing better than walking into the kitchen and smell home cooking. Nationality can play a big part of the kitchen garden. Being Italian, I grow Italian herbs in mine. Has everyone decided what colors they like to see? Kitchen garden should have a rich, fertile soil with good drainage. Most soils need to be amended, so be sure to have your soil tested before you get started. Your test results will give you recommendations. Some of you may already know this, but you can do a soil sample from your own garden. You can pick the form up here at the Extension Office with Richard. And what you do is, first of all, you fill out your sample bag. It's very important to fill this bag out before you fill it up. Then you're going to open it up, and you're going to fill it up to this line and seal it. When you take your soil sample, you go down four to six inches scoop some dirt from several areas in your garden. You put it all in a bucket, you mix it up, and then you fill your bag. You fill out this urban and homeowner soil sample information form, which is available here in the extension office. It includes your name and your mailing address and your sample information. Most people want, number one, a routine analysis. This test is a base test for basic fertilizer recommendations. So by requesting this test, it'll tell you what you may be lacking in your soil to grow your best garden. Then you mail this off to Soil 
Water and Forage Testing Laboratory in College Station. <clears throat> if you happen to be over there, you can walk it in, and the address is on this side of the form. That is on 2610 F&B Road, College Station. In 10 to 14 days, you'll be notified of your results. If you have questions concerning the results, you can contact AgriLife Extension or visit with Richard, and he'll be happy to discuss with you what you could do to amend your soils. Use compost and good topsoil. I top dress with pea gravel and rocks in place of mulch along my kitchen walkway because I tried mulch and when it would rain the mulch would wash off onto the sidewalk. Color, texture, and smell. Next comes size. Color, texture, and smell are very important. It gives you a sense of peace when you see colors that you like. Textures give depth and, of course, smell. My kitchen garden is small but produces all of the herbs that I need to create traditional Italian dishes. Those herbs are readily available fresh when I need them. Here's some that I used in my spaghetti sauce basil, fresh oregano. There are many plants that you can grow in your kitchen garden. Herbs can be grown in the kitchen garden. Oregano, which is a perennial, will come back year after year and it will spread. Greens, such as Swiss chard, make a lovely display. They're annuals. Yellow stalks, red stalks, it's all very pleasing to the eye. Most of your herbs are aromatic. Thyme being very aromatic, and it's also a perennial. It spreads nicely and low to the ground. Kale, being a cool weather crop, planted in the fall, will last into the spring. It's an annual. I actually, just last week, cut all of my kale plants, chopped them, blanched them, and froze them. They freeze well. They retain that beautiful green color. Strawberries make an excellent companion plant. The previous year's plant sends out runners that produce fruit the following spring and makes great ground cover that will help to keep the weeds at bay. Here's some herbs in my garden. Lavender at the top, chives, curly parsley, Swiss chard, some flat Italian parsley, and some curly parsley, and Swiss chard, and some strawberry, and some chive. Other things to take into consideration when planning your kitchen garden. Is it receiving morning or afternoon sun? Most plants like morning sun and our hot afternoon sun, most plants love a little bit of shade. Proximity to water source and protection from frost and wind. The kitchen garden is an alternative for those that want to garden and don't have acreage for the large sprawling family size garden. Now I know some of our master gardeners have very large garden spreads. Besides, the large garden takes time and energy. You will find the kitchen garden being small scale 
enjoyable and very rewarding. Kathy, I have a question. I'm going to interrupt you right quick. Uh, Vicki Magruder wants to know, what kind of kitchen scraps do you recommend adding to compost? All of your scraps. Potato peelings, carrot peelings. Well, I give my carrot peelings to my horses. That's their little treat. Onion skins. Peelings from any kind of a vegetable, cucumber. The ends of squash. Open up your tea bags, add your coffee grinds. My compost pile is away from my house. It's down near my barn. I just keep a plastic container in my refrigerator. I put my scraps in there and then I dump it every couple days in the big bin as it fills up. Anything else? That's the only question so far. If you do have any other, if any of y'all have questions, please uh, provide them in the chat box. And as they come up, we'll ask Kathy to provide an answer for those questions you might have. You'll find the kitchen garden being very small scale, enjoyable, and rewarding. Always dream big, but start small. You don't really want that garden to get out of hand with weeds. If you're using raised boxes or containers, the soil should be replaced every season with new soil. A raised garden box is a shortcut to a plentiful harvest. Using the square foot gardening concept to get the most out of your small area. You can grow a lot in a small area. You can grow vertically, plants that climb, cucumbers, instead of letting them sprawl out into your garden area and taking up space that you could plant other things. Then their size and the shape of your containers. You can have square, you can have round, rectangle, triangle, you can have L-shaped. It's your imagination. And there's plenty of material out there for building these containers. This is a good example. This was a metal water trough that was rusted out on the bottom. I had my husband Joe cut it in half he smoothed off the edge so it wasn't sharp. One section does have a bottom, but it was pretty rusty, so he cut bigger slits in the bottom of it. And the other one has no bottom. So we sharpshooted the vegetation where it would be sitting. Then we filled it up with good topsoil, compost, and it's worked out real well. My squash are loving it. My Swiss chard and carrots. Question, is it too late to plant okra? Now would be a great time for okra. Okra loves hot, hot weather. Now, to get that okra to germinate, what I do is I take the old-fashioned ice cube tray and I fill it with water and I put a seed in it and I freeze it. Then I take that ice cube and I plant it. And it really helps because the seed is a hard seed. It helps break open the outer part of it. Works real well. I've had real good success by doing that. Containers work well for the kitchen garden as well as raised boxes. Sometimes you may have a sidewalk or a pathway with a small area for planting. Utilize this space with edible flowers, such as nasturtiums, pansies. They're beautiful on the top of a cupcake or a cake as decoration. Our Master Gardener President, we had a birthday cake for her, and we topped it with fresh roses. Sunflowers, lavender, and roses Use these to make a spectacular presentation of your food. 
you know, presentation is everything. Incorporate vegetables such as peppers or eggplant as their compact. You can get your compact plants and put near the back and then your herbs toward the front. How many of you refrain from planting anything because of the deer? I know I'm one of them. My husband says, well, I don't know why you're going to plant that. The deer are just going to eat it. Well, there's a number of plants that will actually repel and even more than that are deer resistant. Uh, real quick, when do you plant your nasturtiums? Your nasturtiums are a spring. As soon as your last frost date, which our zone 8B is around March the 10th, into April, probably through the middle of May, I would think even now you could still plant the nasturtium seed, as long as you keep your stuff watered. Because we really haven't had hot days Last year on this day, it was 103 degrees, and we're just probably in our 80s now. So I think you could still plant seeds and have success with them. Your deer repellent plants include lavender, onion, catnip, and if you have cats, your cats will just go crazy, sage, spearmint, other varieties of mint, Chives, garlic, thyme, rosemary, and you probably see some kind of sequence here. These are all plants that have smell. So any and all plants that smell really help to deter the deer. I've actually planted rosemary amongst my flower beds and it's helped. These types of plants work well in a kitchen garden and also work well throughout your landscape to help deter the deer. Herbs work well when planted amongst your flowers. Deer love flowers and the herbs will deter them. With well-designed innovative pots that water themselves, planters and raised beds, you can cultivate a healthy, Homegrown, freshest harvest just steps from your kitchen door. Reap the rewards of your effort. You'll always have fresh herbs at your back door. And a lot of these herbs, like your oregano and your thyme, they go through the winter. They like that cooler weather. And once again, here's my herbs. I love my herbs. Okay, now I have to have a shout out to Michelle Eldridge. This is actually my kitchen window from the outside looking in. After a lengthy discussion with Michelle concerning sweet potatoes, she had great success growing sweet potatoes, and I have in the past had success with them also. But I've always bought my slips. Michelle and I discussed growing sweet potato slips, and this came from one plant. I had an organic sweet potato, a purple plant, that I bought at the grocery store back in the fall. Being organic, it wasn't sprayed with anything, so it did sprout out all these little starters. What you do is you put that sweet potato with the pointed side up in water. All of these little plants will start to grow off of it. Then you gently break them off and you put them in water. Overnight, you will have roots. They root amazingly fast. So, I've put some of them in the ground already. I only have three left in the window. So, that was kind of a fun adventure. But before you move on, we've had a question. My cats don't like catnip. Do you have an answer for that or know why they might not like the catnip? Well, 
Some people don't like broccoli. Some people don't like chicken. Some people don't like cilantro. I guess it just must be the cat's personal choice. <laughs> yes, I've been really happy with the success of these slips. If anyone has questions on starting these slips, I'll be happy to talk with you. And I'm sure Michelle would love to discuss it with you, too. Here's some quiche that I make. These I happen to have taken to one of the Master Gardener meetings. Fresh herbs on top. Just right outside my kitchen door. And this is the lemon verbena cookies that I made and took to the Master Gardener meeting. These were made with the lemon verbena leaves that I had dried. I dried them in the microwave and I only left it in there on a paper towel for just like four or five seconds. It doesn't take long to dehydrate your herbs in the microwave. Does anyone have any questions? I've enjoyed presenting this to you today. Any questions? Anybody have any questions or comments? Nothing as of yet. They're typing, I'm sure. Okay. Well, this is a great book by William D. Adams and Thomas R. Lee Roy. You can purchase it on Amazon. It has a lot of good tips in here on kitchen gardening. And, and what is the name of that book? The name of this book is The Southern Kitchen Garden. Paperback. has a lot of very nice pictures. It's got extensive information in it. I got this book when I was in the Master Gardener class when Tom Leroy did a presentation for us. This book is very good. If you don't have it, you should order it. Here's another little neat thing. It's by Ball. And basically, it's a canning jar. There comes, there comes three in the box, and I think they're about $20. You can get them on Amazon. You can get them. Walmart carries them. It comes with the directions. You can grow your herbs, hydroponic, in your kitchen window. It comes apart. It's got this hydro wick. The directions tell you how far to fill the jar with your water. It tells you when to add your fertilizer, which is like miracle Grow. It comes with the vermiculite, and it comes with a little small package of charcoal, and I guess that keeps it from getting moldy. You plant your seeds in there. You stick it in the window, and you don't have to worry about watering it. It takes care of itself. We've had a question come in. How do you handle your herbs through the winter? My herbs are kind of protected because my garage is on one side, and then, of course, my, my home. But... Those perennial plants like your oregano and your thyme, your sage, they stay green all winter long. Um, your annual stuff like your basil and your parsley, you can dry them, you know, cut them all. When they say we're going to have a frost, just go out there and cut them all back and you can dehydrate them and store them in jars. Ball also makes a little small jar for your herbs. Or you can freeze your herbs, you can chop 
up your parsley. You can chop up your basil and mix it with a little bit of olive oil and garlic. And you can freeze it in ice cube trays, flash freeze it, and then pop those out into a Ziploc bag. Fresh herbs, basil does not like the cold. When you purchase basil at the grocery store, you should bring it home, take a pair of scissors and snip off the bottom, put it in a glass of water, and put a plastic bag over it and leave it on your counter. It likes that moisture. Basil does not do well when you put it in the refrigerator. Another question, is it necessary to soak your seeds before planting? Some seeds, you're advised to soak your big seeds, your hard seeds, and then some of them, your bigger seeds, and especially like blue bonnet seeds, they take a little fingernail file and just kind of scratch it a little bit to help that germination process because the seed is very hard. The only seed that I really do anything with is the okra seed and I put it in an ice cube tray with water and freeze it and then once it's frozen I take it out and I plant it. Another question, should I put my lemon tree in full sun or under my patio? Lemon trees like full sun. I have a very large lemon tree in a syrup tub. And it is about oh, five years old now, maybe. And Joe will tell you that at Thanksgiving, when all the kids come up, he gathers them and he gets those boys now to move that plant onto my back porch. It is covered. And when it is going to freeze or we're going to have cold weather, we hang a drop light and I cover it up with a blanket. Right now though, your lemon tree would love full sun. That's how they grow in Florida. Uh, that's all the questions that have come through so far. Lots of praise though, lots of compliments on your presentation. Well, thank you for joining us today. I'm sorry that the slideshow wasn't bright and vivid so you could see the pretty pictures. Maybe we can show this presentation at one of our Master Gardener meetings. And uh, I'll also, uh, this, pres this presentation, in addition to the posting of the video on Facebook, the video will also be uh, uploaded to YouTube, and we will find a way to make the recipe and the presentation available through either the Master Gardener Volunteer Management System or somewhere on the Leon County Extension site. We'll have, a, uh, and once we get those posted, we'll uh, put those links on Facebook so everybody can have access to that. Well, Lemon Verbenia is a plant that doesn't really like the cold. So as soon as it gets cold, the leaves will drop off. And if you stick that plant in your greenhouse, it will go through the winter, and then in the spring, new little shoots and new leaves will come back out. So it is, it's a good plant to plant in a container. I guess that's it. So we appreciate y'all joining us live today. For those of y'all that have watched the video at a later date, we appreciate you watching. Uh, hopefully you learned something. Thank you, Kathy, for a great job, a great presentation. One final question. Why does my basil come back every year? Well, if your basil's coming back, it's reseeded itself. The top, when it get, turns brown, all of those are seeds. They fall off and they volunteer and they all come back. Mine comes back. Sometimes I even have tomatoes that come back. All right. Well, thank you, Kathy. Great job. And, I enjoyed uh, it. It was my pleasure. 